And that's why I, I, I like the punitive damages because it's, it's time somebody slapped the city around a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you, know, you, you were talking, Jim, earlier about uh, while the, some of these abuses that were done by the police back in the, in the 70s, a long time ago, they, they were getting uh, slapped with punitive damages in the millions of dollars. Yeah, so the exactly. police department started to shape up. Right. <laughs>
he and his wife's business down on Main Street from receiving some financial assistance that the city offered to businesses that were struggling a little bit as a result of the COVID shutdowns. And um, Well, one of the things he complained, too, was that you had to fill out a form. And they qualified right. for everything on the form to get it. Other businesses didn't qualify. For instance, one of them didn't, was behind in their taxes. You know, that would disqualify you. But that company got it. So yeah. companies that didn't qualify were getting these thousands of dollars, and temples that did qualify were not. And who stuck his foot in it? <laughs> not, well, not the mayor. <laughs> the mayor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I am, I'm somewhat amazed at the stupidity. Really. Can you, you shouldn't be by this point. Well, I but, shouldn't be. But, well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing them, you should mention. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them is the uh, First Amendment, freedom of speech, is one of the uh, count one that. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was that, when I saw that. Yeah, yeah I thought. Man. So, and I think he's got a case there. I mean, you, you do have a right to. Uh, well, to speak and peaceably yeah, assemble. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that was what he did. There's no violation. I mean, he created no violation of that, other than apparently it was up to uh, the city who decided that he was not worthy of, a, of, a, of, of federal money, actually. It wasn't city money. It was money that was granted to the city uh, for uh, to disperse among businesses that mm. were suffering from the COVID shutdown. That was the thing. It had nothing to do with scarce city resources. Right. This, was, yeah. this was money came from the federal government. Right. There was a board. There was a board that was supposed to decide how this money oh, was Oh, that was the other part, yeah. yeah. And was that board actually, was it, the board, or was it Corey Mason who said we're not going to give it to uh, Navratil and Dimples uh, imports? According to the suit, it was. Yeah, it was it, Corey it was, Mason was just Mason. doing it on his own. Violation he, of the Fourteenth Amendment, the uh, uh, equal, protection. equal protection. You know, was he treated? Was he equally protected? Uh, you know, was he treated equally? Doesn't sound like it. Not no. not when they qualified according to the questionnaire. Right. Dimples qualified, but other other. Companies that didn't qualify were getting the money. The next one was due process. You know, was was he actually uh, was he given some kind of a due process period where he could say, hey, you know, why am I why am I not giving it? It's automatically we just did it to you. Yeah. You know, there's no due process here, yeah. and uh, and that falls under a city, and that that that, that that's fairly. I don't, I don't think people realize, but that one probably has a little meat to it. You know, there is some. I think well, we, we've there. seen it enough of uh, that type of junk in yeah. with the, uh, Sandy Widener and some of these other cases, you know, oh, geez, it just, yeah. it, you know, and that's why I, I, I like the punitive damages because it's, it's time somebody slapped the city around a little yeah. bit. You, know, you, you were talking, Jim, earlier about uh, while the, some of these abuses that were done by the police back in the, in the 70s, a long time ago, they, they were getting... Uh, slapped with punitive damages in the millions of dollars, yeah, so the exactly. police department started to shape up. Right. Well, wasn't Rodney King like a twelve million dollar settlement? If I'm remembering, it was right. big. But yeah. you know, this is where the court system, I think, has really failed a lot of the of society, is because they've they've softened up on some of these. And I don't know if it's because of the the legislation or it's the actual pressure, uh, political pressure. Because, like I said, civil rights cases used to bring in some pretty healthy dollars if you had violations of civil rights. Today, they don't bring those kind of dollars anymore or it was actually punitive a lot of times it would be a city a police department you know or, or an organization that was you know just uh, violating civil rights you know not because of color because of other other issues this now gets almost settled in a in a negotiation among lawyers and never goes to the court or a jury because they don't want it to come in front of a jury because the jury say hey you know what that actually was an issue and I think lawyers Today need to take cases to a jury. Get it out there. Make it make it make it public. People have to understand what's happening in society. When you do everything behind closed doors and people are paid off and attorneys walk away with a big check and a, and a, and, a, and a victim is still victimized. Yeah, you're not you're not producing. That's not law. Well, that was the idea of open trials too. Yeah, was that right. the, pu the public should know what's going on in, in in some of these in some of these cases? What's going on in the courts? And and. Uh, and, and that's well. That's here's a, here's the case. No, he, the, another count. Count four was uh, again equal protection, and what they're saying: equal protection class one. So it means that we only stuck you out, even though it, there's not a group of people we treated differently. We treated you specifically differently, and that's that's another part of the, the count. I, I think they're right too that it was probably Corey that that did yeah. this. We know that he attends all of the committee meetings, all the board meetings, and he's he's not just sitting there as an observer. I mean, he's uh, participating in participant, and I'm sure 
uh, as is alleged in there, he probably is the guy that pulled the trigger and said, no, they ain't, I don't want them to have He likes to wield his like political him. power. Yeah. You know, if he, no, I mean, you know if the thing, George, it, I think it's just stupidity to a degree. Arrogance and stupidity. Who would say this stuff? I mean, like I was telling, you know, we've done 214 shows. Yeah, we've come to the edge on some of this stuff, but we've never gone out and, 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 and uh, made fraudulent claims that uh, could be taken uh, and, and made them directly to someone or a business or anything that would get us in, in this, uh, sued. Well, there's another element that's missing, too. I mean, if you're going to sue somebody, you want to make sure that they got something to get. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, there you go. You know, <laughs> somebody sues us, they're going to end up with a lawyer's bill, and, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll be as broke as we are. <laughs> Well, but we, but we aren't we aren't slandering people. We're, no, we're very much no, sticking we're being, to. I mean, yeah. you know. But here's the thing: here you got a mayor of a city <laughs> who goes out and I mean, he goes out on <clears throat> public airwaves and puts this stuff out there. He's also got a defamation uh, uh, count that he's he's claiming. Yeah. You know, I mean. Well, when you talk about a person in that way, and yeah. who's, who's got a public business, that that could be hurtful yeah. to your, your to your business. Well, you know, of course, not all this has to be, you know put out in a courtroom and, 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 and worked out. But <clears throat> I think if if uh, Dennis moves this case forward, I think he's got a pretty good case, you know. I would suggest to uh, Corey and to the city to just give the Navratils a call and say, we're sorry, there's a check here waiting for you. Cut your losses and be <laughs> done with it. Otherwise, this could become another protracted, messy lawsuit that even even if uh, uh, Dennis and Dimple lose this case, which they shouldn't, but even if they did, it's still going to cost the taxpayers oh, a bunch absolutely. of money in legal yeah. fees. So, you know. I don't it. understand it personally, and I, I agree, Doc, that's, that would be the smart thing to do, but I don't think that's going to happen because, no. again, I mean, you're so arrogant to, to put this out there and think that you can just say what you want and treat people the way you think they, uh, because I'm the mayor. He's not yeah, that, 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 that's, no. that's the activity that's got to quit. Just because you're the mayor doesn't mean yeah. you get to. You've got right. superior ability to just, you know, bloody, you know, to not go after people. Well, let's move on to the Boutique Hotel. Zahn's Boutique Hotel. Lazarus Arms. I'm calling it Lazarus Arms because it just seems to keep getting resurrected. <laughs> I thought this was dead until uh, we came in and started talking about this this evening. And this is the Boutique Hotel that's going in the Zahn's building, or it's projected to go in the Zahn's building. A couple of developers from Milwaukee bought the building for like a million and a half bucks. A million one, I think. A million one? Oh, I yeah. thought it was, well, over a million dollars. Right. That's a lot for an empty build, a building. A building been sitting empty for Have 20 you seen years what they want for the Porter's uh, land? They want over a million for that. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And that's yeah, that's empty. There ain't even a building. Yeah. 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 So. Amazing. But they're have they're having a closed session uh, to uh, as they put it on the they're gonna uh, amend the contract now. If you go back to the original contract, um, this would have been probably well over a year ago. Um, it was roughly they were gonna the city was going to borrow four million dollars, then loan that four million to the developer, and then also out of the TID we're gonna give about two point eight million to the developer for. You know, Came out to about seven million dollars. About seven million dollars, yeah. what the city was going to ante up. Now, the, it wasn't built. There's, there was, it kind of just died. It seemed like all of a sudden, it seems to be now they're going to do an amendment uh, to the uh, contract. So, and, and it's this last line here. It says, "No, of course we don't have anything because it's closed session. Loan amount will be available upon resolution by the city council." So. My guess is that it's talking about money. So yeah, they're probably talking about more, more money. money. Yeah, more money. But you know, I kind of wanted to kind of what you've got the, the mayor now probably pushing this. If you remember, this was a lead building. <laughs> it was going to be uh, geothermal. Lead building. That's L E E D. That's Correct. that's a, that's environmental. Uh, extravaganza department. Yeah, yeah. Where, where they're going to have <laughs> Local uh, extravaganza places you can park your bike, and you, and you have places to hook up electric cars, and you're going right. to go deep well with getting uh, geothermal, geothermal yeah. heat. So that, that's yeah. And 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 originally the mayor's wanted, uh, he's generally wanted a silver certificate. Now we well, need to get into details right. of that. But these guys came and said, "Hell, silver, hell, gold. We're going platinum." 
<laughs> now, just take a minute here. No, it sounds like Foxconn. Yeah. Oh, we're going to create a thousand jobs. Oh, oh no, we need more than that. Well, we'll give you six thousand. They got it up to thirteen thousand, and so far. Well, when I saw this, I hundred. thought, well, this there's more here than going on. But here, here where I'm going, just take a minute and think about this. Now, this is the city that was shutting down businesses and restaurants and giving twenty five percent occupancy, and now we're going to put a hotel in, which we all kind of know where the hotel industry's been in the last couple of years. Yeah. It's tanked, and even the best operators are having problems uh, keeping hotels uh, filled and, and occupied and, and profitable. You're going to build a boutique hotel in the, in the middle of downtown Racine. Way out of the common yeah. where, where cars are right. going, you know. Some of them are going up and down Highway 32, but not that many. So this is the mayor <laughs> pushing this thing. We're going to renegotiate the contract so possibly we can give them more money to get this thing going because we need development. We're at development. It hey. just it's just almost like a it's it's like slow motion it, to me. It's almost like are they anybody getting this whole thing kind of like put the whole project together? It's just <laughs> you got a a city that's just almost in the pits. Yeah. You drive it down with this these laws and this COVID restrictions, and then yet we want development, and we're going to give more money to get this development going. I mean, I don't know. Is anybody thinking here? Hey, if we had a, a a ton of money just laying around with nothing to do with it, you know, to do with it, you know, I was just like, we're looking for options. Then it might make sense, you know. Yeah, we got all this money. Let's, Here's where I go. Help these if guys you took out. this out to but the this, private, yeah, it's private good, bank. Yeah. Let's say you took it out to the private lender. I just don't see them throwing money at this. No way. Well, that's why it hasn't been taken to a yeah. private lender. Well, even at this, I mean, the project's twenty nine million dollars. Uh, let's just say that they end up getting $10 million from the city in different projects and incentives. You still got to come up with $20 million. I just don't see a $20 million project in downtown Racine in a boutique hotel. And, you know, we talked about maybe Johnson's going to benefit from this somehow or be involved in it somehow, maybe. But I just don't see it. Yeah. I think it's a loser. Well, anyway, there it is. And it's, well, it's we back. keep an eye on it. See yeah. what see what they yeah. come out the other end yeah. from. You know, yeah. after out of this secret conference, see what uh, see what the decision is. How much are, are us taxpayers going to uh, uh, come up with, ante up to get this thing going? You know what else we got to keep our eyes on? Uh oh, marijuana, uh, okay. cannabis, cannabis. Uh, the governor is talking about blanket legalizing. Cannabis, right, for recreational purposes. In the next budget, right. I want to go back just for a minute here and review why it's illegal to begin with. It goes all the way back to 1930 when a guy named Harry Anslinger was appointed, appointed to the new department called the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. Now he had been working in enforcing the prohibition laws on alcohol. Prohibition was ended. Harry was like looking around thinking, I don't have much job <laughs> what, what security do do? here. What am I going to do? <laughs> what can I prohibit? What advice can I stop? <laughs> yeah. So uh, he decided this was his gold ticket was uh, marijuana. And there was a couple of reasons why uh, he liked that. Well, one, he didn't like black and brown people. I mean, that's, that's historically proven. And uh, they were considered to be the, the most frequent users of this substance. So he thought that was a good way of controlling them. Um, he got aligned with DuPont, DuPont Chemical, and DuPont Chemical was all uh, on board with getting rid of hemp because hemp fibers were in competition with their synthetic fibers like nylon. In fact, most people were saying, get that plastic rope out of here, give me some real rope. So DuPont was on board. Uh, the, the pharmaceutical companies were on board. Why were they on board? Well, because you can't really control um, these, these THC recipes. You know, the plants are like, at least at that time, they were so all over the place that there was no way they could control it, so it was not good as a, as a pharmaceutical product. Then there was uh, William Randolph Hearst got on board. William Randolph Hearst was a big newspaper publisher. He owned hundreds, literally hundreds of thousands of acres of pulp forest, which is what he was making the paper for his newspapers and magazines. Well, pulp forests are going to lose their value if there's a lot of hemp on the market because hemp makes a superior paper to wood fiber. Makes a very good so you had hemp. DuPont, you had the pharmacy industry, 
you had uh, uh, Hearst, who was had, had he was like the Facebook of his time. He was like the media back then. So the whole thing was. It culminated in 1937 with the Marijuana Tax Act, which effectively made marijuana illegal. And how has that shaped our society? Well, we are now home to 25% of all the prisoners in the entire world. 25% of all prisoners. We have like less than 5% of the population of the world. And we got 25% of the prisoners. So that's one of the things that's happened to shape our society in the way that it is. In sounds, 19... sounds like Doc's against this prohibition of marijuana. I am. I'm, I'm dead set against it. It's, it's been horrible. Been, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why this was a horrible idea to begin with, and it's created a lot of problems, a lot of social problems in our country. Now, Governor Evers has proposed legalizing it. How do we feel about that, though? What's well, his motivation? Again, Doc, we, I, the way I look at it, Evers is... Um, he, uh, two years ago, he wanted to uh, legalize uh, medical marijuana. Now he wants to legalize medical marijuana and recreational marijuana because he said that uh, dollars are going over Wisconsin borders into Illinois at the tune of about $165 million a year in sales, and he wants to bring those into Wisconsin. I it's all think about the bucks. It, it is about the bucks, <laughs> number one. Number two, I think the guy's ratings have dropped so low that marijuana is a way that, you know, I can shore up some of my ratings, uh, my, my poll numbers. I think that's part of it. The other thing is, if you really, if he really was involved and he really thought that marijuana should be legalized, I mean, <clears throat> first off, he didn't bring it through. There's nothing's really changed for Evers at, at the Capitol. He's got the same people in the, in the uh, House and the Senate and my guess is it probably won't pass. What he should be trying to do, at least my opinion is, instead of trying to shove the whole apple in the horse's mouth, let him take a bite out. He should, if, you, if you're gonna change it, I would start out with medical marijuana, and I would go, uh, and I would bring in a, a campaign that would say, listen, the medical marijuana has benefits to uh, individuals, chronic uh, illnesses, chronic pain. Um, people that want to have, uh, that need a liver transplant say they can't be on. If, if there's a marijuana in their system, they have to get the system, that marijuana out of their system before they get a liver. I mean, bring in issues that really affect real people, why, it, why it's beneficial to the community, why it's beneficial to the, to the, to the, uh, to the state. You know, not the not the money part of it, uh, not the recreational. Hey, we're going to go out and get high, and you know, uh, they really have to formulate well, even, this. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, you know, that it, it shouldn't be presented as something like, oh, here's an opportunity to waste it. Well, it, his it, opportunity it should be uh, your your constitutional freedom. I mean, freedom of choice. I agree, but the, the campaign is just he's way off base on it. I think he's using it as a political ploy, and. Um, you know, I know, Doc, it's a big, big uh, issue with you, but I think this is just another Evers political ploy, and as far as I'm concerned. Uh, well, the, the thing that bothers me is this is something that's been pushed onto the back burner for, uh, you know, close to a century. And there's a lot of people that have been impacted in a terribly negative way. It's been very disruptive to our society. It's been very expensive. I agree. And, uh, you know, it, it's, been, it's been demonstrated that when it's legal in some areas, for instance, uh, they worry about kids, you know, adolescents and, uh, and juveniles. And uh, it actually has been going down. The use has gone down somewhat in the areas where it's legal. Mm -hmm. So it's not like all the kids are going to be smoking pot all of a sudden. That's not how it works. So, you know, all the scare tactics that they've been using are, uh, are just that. They're scare tactics, tactics. It's a very popular thing to be in opposition to. I mean, because it's because yeah. there's been a, a, a hundred years of fear created around this issue. So if you come out as a politician and say, you know, we can't allow this. It's going to destroy our society. Well, and as a matter of fact, not that many people indulge in it when, once it becomes legal. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got again. people that like it. You got people that don't. And it should just be up to the individual. So about the. Uh, election irregularities that are being discussed in court. There's a, there's a lawsuit brought now, and they're, they're taking it to the Supreme Court. Well, this, this is the, this the same is the one lawsuit that, that was rejected by the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Wisconsin Supreme Court. This is one where Corey Mason is listed as a, uh, a defendant. 
um, it uh, was in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. It was Trump versus the uh, Wisconsin Election Committee. The, if you remember back, it was back probably in December or so, the Supreme Court, Wisconsin Supreme Court, rejected it on the fact that it was uh, brought too late. Um, it uh, didn't have uh, merit, and it was... Um, there was something about standing, too. Standing. It didn't, didn't have standing. So it was pitched from the Wisconsin Supreme Court. It's now going... Uh, that was, that was a 4-3 decision, by the right, way. Right, 4-3. And, yep. and, and, and there were some very cogent arguments against uh, uh, right. denying it. In other words, we uh, felt right. it should should be taken on. So it wasn't like it was just unanimous. You know, it was... It was, it was a, pitched. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the way it was, it was, it was it pitched. Was, now it's going to the Supreme Court, but the reason it brought us up on our radar is Corey Mason's in this. So if it is picked up by the, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, it should be an interesting uh, something to follow down the road. Yeah, it is. Right? And, well, and I also, um, Tara Coolidge is in right. there, who's, who's a, a uh, city yep. clerk. Yep. Uh, the, the fact is the law was violated in running this election. I mean, the, the law was supposed it was supposed to be um, certain things go on a way to uh, run the election. Drop boxes were simply not part of the program, and, and that's where Zuckerbucks or Zuckerberg, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> um, came in and offered money to Corey Mason, and uh, he had him uh, be the kind of the focal point for getting the other uh, four big cities: Green Bay, Madison, Kenosha, and Milwaukee. In on this, and on this system. We can't privatize elections. Elections are a core government function, and government should not put its thumb on the scale to dictate who may turn out to vote more easily, while suppressing the vote of other demographics throughout the nation. And that is exactly what happened. In May they had reached out directly to the mayor of Racine. And they told him, we will give you a $100,000 grant. That at the time, based on previous 990 filings, would be about 10% of their entire annual budget. And they told him, you are to keep 60,000 of these funds. Then you're to reach out to the mayor of Green Bay, the mayor of, um, of Kenosha, the mayor of Milwaukee, and I'm forgetting the fifth city right now. I'm getting word of mouth. You guys know about this. And, and so there were five, and you're going to give them $10,000 so that they can prepare a Wisconsin safe election plan. In other words, these five cities preparing their own Wisconsin state election plan without any coordination, cooperation, or involvement of the rest of Wisconsin. Through that, your cities prepared this election plan. Within that plan, they established the provision of drop boxes. Now, it's mighty interesting in that the chain of custody of the ballot is one of the prime considerations in any state law or regulation that ensures the protection and accuracy of the vote. You must maintain a chain of custody of the ballot. If you look at every one of your laws, you will see that focus as vitally important in the application of that law. Yet where is your chain of custody on the millions of ballots that were placed in drop boxes? Where is the video? Where are the logs that show who picked them up and where they took them and what time they were picked up and what time they arrived? To act consistent with your laws, they should have had a two person per key system. Where is your chain of custody? It was promised to you. It was mandated. In any of these states where Mr. Zuckerberg's monies arrived, they have not been provided by Georgia, by Pennsylvania, by Arizona, by Wisconsin, or by Michigan. That raises serious concerns. Drop boxes, as you know, are inconsistent with statute, despite Mr. Knudsen torture of the meaning of the word clerk. It was, it was a violation of the law, and that's why uh, Tara Coolidge, who participated in it, and Corey Mason, who participated in it, are part of the lawsuit. Right. And it, it, it's a violation of the law. They, uh, w w and uh, three justices thought it should have been prosecuted at the time. Four justices disagreed. 
So it, it was thrown out. Now it's going. So now it, it's out of the United, Wisconsin Supreme Court. So now it's going up to the United States Supreme Court, and we'll see what happens up there. You know, right. it, it's it. Right. I, I, there's no question. The law was broken. The the, the the thing about timing and all this type of stuff is. Uh, uh, well, some of that was kind of funny because it's like, well, then bring it in time. Well, when do you bring it? Yeah, before yeah. <laughs> before the action happens. I mean, you know, I mean, it was obvious. It was all it was, thrown in just before yeah. the just before the yeah. election went on. You hardly knew what was going on, except right. that there, oh, we got. Well, you have to. First, hey, you have hey, to guess what? We we can we can just <laughs> right. throw our elections, our, our our ballots into these I, boxes. I, I don't here. think we don't the to to Wisconsin home. Supreme Court wanted to touch it. They felt those elections are tough to to you know. I mean, those are the will of the people. Well, if it was or wasn't. The fact is, they pitched it and they went to the Supreme Court. So we'll see. We'll all know within a week or so what uh, how the Supreme Court acts on yeah. uh, on these lawsuits. Okay. <coughs> well, we're going to keep an eye on all this stuff, and uh, you guys do too. You know, I mean, uh, if you got something bothering you, let us know about it. We'd love to talk about things that are bothering people. So we'll come back next week. We'll talk about some more, and we hope you come and join us. Have a wonderful day. Stay warm.